Hi guys, I wanted to introduce to you the idea of creating silhouettes, uh, sorry, templates and stencils for any painting that you want to create. So a template or a stencil will help us either replicate uh, a shape or do it more accurately. So we can do this from existing silhouette images that we can find on the internet. So here's one here and I have a, another one here. So that gives you a general idea of what I mean by a, a silhouette and we can create um, a, a duplicate of this form by simply taking a pair of scissors, cutting out the middle so that you can get started and then you'll be able to cut around the actual shape and you want to remove everything that's black um, or on the inside of the shape and then you'll be able to um, use it as a guide to paint with. If you're thinking of doing it more than one time then maybe this A4 sheet of paper is not going to withstand the paint um, enough. So in that case I would recommend using um, an acetate sheet Put that on top and do a tracing and um, you'll be able to cut that acetate um, really perfectly and be able to reuse it you'll be able to wash it um, you can use it several times if there's a repeat pattern that you want to do okay so i'm not going to finish cutting it but i just wanted to show you how i would cut it so this will be a single color um, template if i were to cut out the whole player and the ball and another idea and this one let's say I wanted to do um, the leaves in a certain color and the flower in another color in fact what I would do is cut the flower and the leaves separately I might have two copies of this and um, I would cut the leaves as one object so in fact I would cut I would ignore the white part and simplify it for myself and simply cut around the whole leaves and the stem at the exact same time. I could paint that in green and I could paint the flower in the color that I wanted to paint as well. So, but I would keep them as two separate templates, two separate uh, stencils. And then I want to talk about <coughs> difficult shapes. So if I wanted to use and create a donut, um, there are a couple of ways to do it. One is um, because basically the center will fall out when I cut the donut away, um, I do need to salvage the center if possible. So one of the ways that you can do it is you have to keep part of the donut. So having part of it is enough to help us create um, the overall shape that we want to have um, to create our painting. It's really a reference shape. So if I go around, so my red line basically represents where I want to cut. And that will help me preserve part of it. So I basically get these two C-shaped pieces that will not fall away, okay, or the center won't fall away. And I can create a donut, a partial donut, and then later, when I remove the stencil, I'll just fill these parts that didn't get painted. Um, and it'll be quite easy to do because I have lots of reference points for me. Okay, so that's another way. So I can do this right on top of a, a photocopy of a photo or anything like that. I can actually draw an outline and help myself that way. I also want to talk about doing a little more complicated um, uh, stencils. So this picture is of a French Bulldog and she's got quite a lot of detail and sometimes for some people it's hard to see the details. So I have a suggestion that you might want to run it through um, an app like a lot of those, uh, sorry, a lot of those comic apps will have um, certain effects that they can create that will kind of simplify the detail in an image. So it might be easier for you to see, you know, various various shapes. So, for example, um, 
one shape that I would definitely do in the beginning is basically the silhouette. So the silhouette that we saw in the first two examples, we want to actually be able to cut her whole body out, or sorry, the whole head and body, and we'll cut around her. And that big hole is in fact my first um, stencil, and that's the first layer I would paint. On top of that, I then would cut these other shapes, these darker shapes. And after that, I will cut the eyes and so forth, bit by bit, layer by layer. But I would encourage you to do it step by step. Um, I can give you more tips, um, you know, when, when we meet, um, but for sure, um, you'll want to plan ahead for any stenciling that you want to do. And then a few other tips that I can give you is, you know, obviously the tools, you need a really sharp pair of scissors. Um, another thing that would really help you is to use a cutting mat and an X-Acto knife blade. You want something very small and pointy and sharp. And what that will do is allow you to turn corners more easily. So when you're cutting something that's very complicated, you know, try to draw the, the knife blade towards yourself and also try to turn the image so that it can um, kind of match your hand. So you want to be able to do that. All right. If you have any questions, um, you can always text me. I will send um, my uh, WhatsApp uh, with this video. I'll, I'll have it um, posted. And so you can ask me questions as you're kind of preparing to do your painting. And if you have stencils, this is just a, a tip in case you want to do something very elaborate and you want to, you know, have a little guide. This is one really great way to do it. Okay. So I look forward to meeting you and um, I hope you can make use of this stenciling idea and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.